Elisabetta Nudi Angelini, our first guest on Italian Wine Podcast. Italian Wine Podcast. Chin Chin with Italian Wine People. Welcome to the Italian Wine Podcast on the Road Edition. And this is a very special episode because I saw Elisabetta Nudi Angelini, she has three names, in New York just a couple of weeks ago, maybe 10 days ago, at Wine Experience. Elisabetta, you were our very first guest on Italian Wine Podcast five years ago. It's true. And now, fast forward to now, we are nearing um, 1,200 episodes, so 1,200 episodes. So I said, we have to do an anniversary episode. So we are here in Altesina with Elisabetta Nudi Angelini, our first guest on Italian Wine Podcast. Ciao, Elisabetta. Ciao, ciao. So what we're going to do today is maybe taste a few wines, a few of her signature wines, and then talk about what's happened the past five years. But for the audience who are unfamiliar with your wineries, because she's got four, and um, yourself, let's just do a brief overview of who you are and your wineries, the okay. famous a, B, C, D. My background is not a wine background, and especially my family is not a, it was not in the wine business like many producers now. I start everything over 25 years ago, but before that I was working in movie productions and uh, in a pharmaceutical business. <laughs> Because your family used to My own, family. yeah. Angelini is the Angelini used pharmaceutical. Used to own a pharmaceutical company. And, uh, but I decided when I was a grown up, I decided to do about eating and drinking to do my future. But you were um, in the pharmaceutical business, right? And then why did you, I mean, everybody loves to drink and um, eat. eat. But, but why, why, why? To make that my life in drinking and, and, uh, and eating because I decided to become a wine producer. But of course, once you get in the country, you are not only a wine producer, you are an oil producer, you are a grain producer, we are a honey producers, and uh, I get food and wine, but especially wine, of course. Wine is the thing that uh, make me excited uh, even after so many years every year you look for the harvest every year you are with the heart up to here to see what's going on and uh, and uh, now i can talk because the grape is all in the winery all in the cellar no, we won't try the 18 today because we still have the 17 we can't you will try it at the fair. You will okay. try it at the Benvenuto. In, in the Romello, Benvenuto. In the Benvenuto. But uh, it's very interesting. 18 is a beauty, I would say it's a beautiful vintage. Okay. Um, maybe it's not a vintage that will last forever, uh, that will age forever, like uh, uh, 15, 16, or 204, or 97, or those beautiful, beautiful vintages. But is a, it, it is a vintage, a lot of elegancy, a lot of, it's very fashionable. Uh, maybe it won't age long, maybe 20 years, 25 years. I decided to move in the country, it was a big change. Uh, I was almost 40, I was 38, 39 when I decided that. In the meantime, my great love story was uh, accomplished because I went back with my former fiancé. Okay, my poor husband died when the children were very young, Alessandra right. especially, was very, very young. And, um, but before my husband, I was engaged with Roberto. Roberto mm -hmm. is, my, is my, uh, my husband now. And uh, he showed up again and uh, 
And we moved in the country. He oh, loves. Okay. He loves to live. So it was in the kind country. of your second honeymoon. Yeah, absolutely, a, a second life. Because yeah. uh, I was just going to ask you, you know, going from Rome to the countryside. I mean, it's not. It's it's not very far from Montalcino, but it's still it's. It's isolated, right? Yeah. And Montalcino is very my gosh proven <laughs> provincial compared si, to Rome, right? Compared to Rome, of course. So, Rome is very international. Rome and Milan are the most international city. We you don't even have Wi-Fi or connectivity most of the time. No, <laughs> no, we got wi a horrible Wi-Fi still in a place where everything slow down. Uh, and coming from a big city, you don't understand. And sometimes you push the people to, to be more fast and, more, and to become quicker. But um, then you understand the beauty of slowing down. But now where do you live? I live here in Altesino, yeah. and my children have a house in Caparzo. Yeah, which they is just one Caparzo. kilometer, so less than a kilometer yeah. away. So that's a good segue to kind of remind our audience the four wineries. So let's ace for Altesino. Altesino by the baby of the is completely a coincidence because A for Altesino, B Borgo Scopeto, which is in Il Chianti Classico, where is, the, ro uh, the letter of Juliet is si, um, si. was shot. Yeah, yeah. Was, was created, right? Yes, the, yes. The location for that movie is Borgo Scopetta. Yes, started in Verona, of course, but then they moved to Tuscany because they had to look for Lorenzo. So for all the trivia fans out there. Yeah, okay. letters to Juliet, it's a cute one. Borgo Scopetta, the name is Borgo Scopetta because Borgo in Italian means little town. And uh, originally it was a little town, like Volpaia, for yeah, example. Yeah, it's Hamlet. And now the, the town became a, a, a resort, uh, an hotel. Uh, it's a five stars hotel, and, uh, and of course they shoot the movie in there. And close by there is the winery. Uh, Borgo Scopeto is, a, is my big, big property because it's over 500 hectares altogether. It's huge. And it's the only property altogether. Now, together with La Maremma, then A, Altesino, B, Borgo Scopeto, C, Caparzo. Which is just down the road. Just down the road, Brunello di Montalcino again, and La Doga, Doga delle Clavole, in Maremma, where I do Morellino and Vermentino. A is Which the is a smaller winery. Smaller winery. Smaller winery, and where I do a simple wine, like the one we are drinking now. Okay, so let's start drinking a little bit of the wines. Okay, so the first wine we are drinking is it's Chardonnay, Chardonnay Riesling from Altesino. Okay, so Chardonnay Riesling blend. What's the blend? Yeah, Chardonnay, 80 percent. Yeah, predominantly. Yeah. Chardonnay. Yeah. And was this wine from? Uh, prior to your purchase or it's something you've no, started? No, no, something we started. Okay, so no, when no, did, what was absolutely. your first harvest? Um, my first harvest was of this wine was I purchased in 2002. This one came up in 2008 because I planted in 2005. It's a very fresh wine. This wine again doesn't go in wood. It's very fresh mm -hmm. and very, very pleasant as a, for an aperitivo, it's very good and... Um, and what is the production volume? How many bottles do you produce? No, just 12,000. So you drink it at your home? Yeah, and we give it to a <laughs> few customers as an entry wine, you know, sometimes. Right. Especially we use it when, um, when we do wine dinners or for an for events. for events, and uh, to start the dinner is always very nice to start with a white wine. Okay, so let's start with the first. We're going to go with okay, the with the Rosso di Montalcino. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Probably is this one. No, maybe then is this yeah, one. That's yes. It. Okay. Rosso di Montalcino, 100% Sangiovese. So you know you purchased. Um, you purchased the winery 20 years ago. It yes. was the 20th anniversary this year. This year, yes. yes. Great big celebration. Yes. So I have a question for you. So you purchased this winery 
uh, 20 years ago. Sí. Right? Has the style changed within the past years? How has it evolved? I think I didn't change much because I loved what they were doing in Altesino. And we taste, taste every single step, every single step of uh, the fermentation, sometimes even before harvest, we test the, the grape to see if it's ripe enough, and, um, and we try to don't make mistakes, because the chemistry is good to fix mistakes, but uh, uh, technology is good to prevent mistakes and to make a perfect wine. What do you think is more important in making your wine? Is it the vineyard management oh. or is it the winemaking? Oh yes, the vineyard. Everything starts in the air. That's but which is more important? Because the way you're speaking to me, it's very much the winemaking side, right? Yeah. The techniques, yeah. the, the vessels, the technology. But the winemaking is all around the vineyard, what the vineyard produces, because I want to save the fruit. This is what I want to do. The fruit that comes out from my vineyards has, has to be um, the way it is in the wine. I don't want to change it, because if nature decides to do the fruit in that way, I have to keep it and preserve it and to make the people taste what nature can do without the people changing what nature decides to do, especially with Rosso di Montalcino. I love Rosso because... And, uh, but it's there, the tannins You are have all there. the flavors, especially a lot of fruit, In like, and you can drink it every day. Yeah. Yeah, you, know. you can drink it every, every day because it's absolutely affordable, even economic. And how many uh, so, bottles are you producing of this? I'm a big producer of Rosso di Montalcino. Altesino makes about 18,000. 80, 80. 18. Oh, 18. 18. No, 18. I was like 80, that's a lot. Caparzo is doing 110,000. Okay, so let's start drinking Brunello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is Brunello 270. How, how much is Rosso di Montalcino for a retail price in Italy? Altesino is about um, 19, 20 euro. Uh, Caparzo is less, uh, is about 15. Okay, so here we have the first Brunello and it's... And this is the Brunello 2017. You see how fruity is uh, even the Brunello, but it's big. The tann tannins are there and uh, there is not too much interfering with the wood because we are using only big barrels for the Brunello, for every Brunello, even for the Rosso di Montalcino, only big barrels. We don't use uh, barrique or tonneau for these sort of wines because we love to show what the vineyard give to us. And I think it's a, it's a beautiful result. I'm very happy. I, I think you are a marketing genius, to be quite honest, because, <laughs> because you, you use this huge botti, right? Si. And then every winery has a different color Come associated <laughs> with it. I've never seen anything like that, uh, right? Uh, so Altesino is golden yellow. Gold yellow, because the label, of course, is gold and right. white, and uh, that's the color of Altesino. And then we went to Caparzio, and everything is green. Green. Caparzio is green because the label is green. The label of Caparzio is green. We don't have Caparzio bottle here. And at the big, big botti, there, 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 all the trimmings are also in green. See, si. It's very easily um, recognizable. See, si. absolutely. And also you can, and a very good aided recall. And then you have Bolgo Scopetto, which is blue. Blue, navy blue. All the botti are blue. So I'm surprised not to see, like, you know, an uh, organic, you know, you're so green in a way, right? Yeah. We that are, your wines aren't like organic. We are in conversion and we decide to start the conversion in the organic 
Altesino or both Caparz uh, and Altesino? Okay, Caparz and Altesino. Uh, Borgo Scopeto is almost organic. Mm -hmm. Next year will be organic. It's already three years because mm -hmm. you need three years yes. for the conversion. And Borgo Scopeto, it's done. Next year we will come out with the organic wine. Mm -hmm. We start the conversion this year. We tried last year, but it was impossible. And we said, okay, we start next year. But um, this year it's okay. Let's see what's going on next year. Okay. And, uh, but we denounce that we start the You know, you can say, okay, I'm starting to be mm, green. But uh, if one terrible year where it's raining and, uh, and a lot of humidity, you have to go back on your steps and in other ways you lose your production or your production will be a disaster. Okay, let's go to the next Brunello and then you'll tell us the difference between this Brunello and okay. the next one. Okay. This is Montosoli 217. And this is our popular wine. Yeah, this is your kind of a signature wine. Signature right. wine. Right. Absolutely. This is Montosoli. Montosoli is a hill facing our winery. It's a special hill. This is a strange vineyard. It's the top part of Montosoli. And uh, it's completely on the north side of the hill. The mm. south part is Caparzo with La Casa. But, but you were the first to do Montosoli. The first to did Montosoli. And no, Caparzo never called his, uh, his uh, single vineyard Montosoli, always La Casa, because it was the name <coughs> of the property. La Casa, we left the same name of the property. Mm -hmm. And uh, Caparzo is called La Casa. But the south part is the tip of the hill, the south part is Caparzo, the north part is Altesino. In here there is Barricci on the top part like us, and the rest is underneath us. And Montosoli is really a special place. We, we don't do anything. Even when we have to put some new vineyards, mm -hmm. uh, we pick the same old, we don't know which kind of clone is made Montosoli because we found it over there. It's an old, was a very old vineyard. And are the vines old as well? And the vines are very, were very old. How old are they? Oh, they were old when the former owner bought Altesino. Mm -hmm. But they decide, they, those wines were so good, those, um, those uh, vines were so good that they decide to cut pieces and prepare the new Barbatelle out of the, the, that clone because it was an, a strange clone of Sangiovese that was not in the market and we still do that. Any time a, a plant die or a, we have to substitute, we make a clone out of our plant and uh, I think it's a special creature, this, uh, this Montosoli, is so, it's the only wine I can recognize when we do a tasting with many, many wines, sometimes I mix up La Casa and I should not say so. <laughs> But I think you're being honest. People yeah, cannot yeah. always tell you why. Yeah, right? but Montosoli is so. <laughs> you can recognize it yeah, out of the Yeah, I lawn. can recognize yeah. it. I can recognize it among 20 wines, 20 Brunello. How do you recognize it? What are the characteristics of Montosoli? Okay. Uh, first of all, the smell. The smell is so pure. To me. When you say pure, what uh, does it mean? Uh, Red, red fruit, mm -hmm. so little it's... red fruit, the way it's supposed to smell every, every Brunello. And then it's a little bit dusty, a Sangiovese, the Sangiovese dust, I call, because I love this little dust. In the Brunello probably is more, more present. What about in terms of tannin? Oh, it, it's silky, when you right? drink it, it's silky mm -hmm. and seems seems like a very light wine, but 
in your mouth explode and last long, long time. Yeah, the the, uh, the length. The length is very, very long. It's a, but especially when you are eating, uh, because the, drinking it is almost sweet. Mm -hmm. But when you put this wine against, I don't know, prosciutto, salami, or uh, a big piece of meat, or a big roast, uh, this wine wins on everything. You feel it. So you're talking about meat, salami, you know, kind of the local food. If you were to um, pair with, let's say, quote unquote, international food, right? What would you... Uh, I would, would say steak, <laughs> meat, every yeah, kind of meat. Steak all the way. Steak yeah. all the way, meat, every, every kind of roast. Um, that's Italian again is not uh, international but pasta with meat sauce or, or a big pasta even carbonara with eggs and uh, pancetta or talking about uh, i was drinking this wine in china eating dim sum dim sum yeah come si pronuncia yeah, dim sum and was perfect. The, the basic dim sum usually are made out of meat. Yeah, like pork and... and pork and... Uh, they were perfect, perfect. Of course, in America with ribs. Uh, in America, it's very easy to pair this wine. And um, I think it's a wine that can go with, uh, with big food big tasty food this wine seems so so underground so over pairing but this one will come out mm -hmm. this i love how this long wine. how long can this wine age at when will it not how long can it age because we know the brunellos can age mm. for a very long time mm. when will it be at its best showing i in your think opinion? seven eight years seven from eight now. years yeah for sure at least. And then it will stay for 10 years, it will stay at its So we're talking top. about we're talking about 12 to 13 years from the vent from the vintage. Si. From the harvest. Si. This is the most aged wine in the world. The Brunello di Montalcino is the most aged wine in the world. As a, by rules, by regulation. Of course, many, many people like to come out with certain reserva after seven, eight years or whatever. But uh, by rules, the Brunello di Montalcino is the most aged wine in the world. No wine in France, in Spain, as a rule to come out after five years or worse, after six years, the reserva. And, uh, but really, Really, this wine can be can be ruled out even after eight years. It's impossible to keep a wine eight years in a cellar because we will go all bankruptcy because it will be a big, big effort. But really, the Sangiovese is an unbelievable, unbelievable clone. And now we are going to 216. That is a to so me one more year. It's a very good vintage, and this Reserva is a baby comparing to what our wine can do. So for everyone out there, the Reserva needs one more age, years of aging. So yes. th this is why we're drinking all 17 and then um, the 16. year before 16 for 16. the Reserva. And the alcohol on all of this is 14.5? About, yes. 14. But some of them really is 14, 30, 14, 20, yeah. but we put, you know, 50 or 14. Yeah. Because this is the Italian rule, just to be sure, the Rossi Montalcino is 14. Right. And the Brunellos are 14, 5. So yeah. give us in terms of the, the volume of production so that our audience can kind of contextualize the production volume for the three Brunellos that we were tasting. Okay, uh, the Brunello, the, the vintage Brunello is uh, 120,000 bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, that means a thousand cases. In okay. cases, is, uh, and, and I'm, then, I'm horrible in cases. I'm, I'm very good in bottles. 
um, Montosol is about 12,000, 14,000 bottles mm -hmm. and the Reserva the same, 12,000. And what are the price points, retail price points for these in Italy? In Italy is about uh, the um, Brunello, around 40, between 40 and 45 euro. Montosoli is between 60 and 70 euros and the reserve are the same. I have a question for you. You have Caparzo. Si. You're competing with yourself, right? Like you're si. right next door. Si. How do, how do you manage that? You have two different uh, companies, two different staff, two but you're producing yeah. same wine, especially About, the Brunello, right? right? Yeah. So how do you, what is the strategy in but terms of communication? Better to competing to yourself than to somebody else. But that's a beautiful competition for the people that is working in here. There is a beautiful competition, even with my employees. Um, Altesino is to be better than Caparzo, and Caparzo is to be better than Altesino. But that's a very good push for all of them, and it's beautiful. When you're representing the wines, right, like the, your family, you, yourself, yeah. your daughter, you're still representing both companies, right? Yes, yes. How do, how do you, you have to like change hat and I say, had, Altesino, uh, yeah. Caparzo? No, it depends. If I'm, doing, Scopetto. if I'm doing a dinner for Altesino, of course, I'm telling, I'm, it's not my only winery. I have other winery, one in uh, Montalcino, and sometimes it's very good because maybe I'm doing a dinner for Altesino and somebody already knows Caparzo. And they say, oh, you're the Caparzo lady, oh good, and then we... You're the Caparzo lady. See, si, see, si, because they call me like that, they don't know my last name yeah. sometimes. And I have a winery in Chianti Classico, a winery in Maremma, and maybe one day they will if they want to, they, I hope they will stay together. Right. Because it's nice to have a big group. But I always left Altesino as his own cellar, his own vineyards, his own everything. And Caparzo, they both go on their legs. And, but then I said, I have two children, it's good to have two Brunellos. And Altesino is part of the family. And then especially I was missing the A. And Altesino is the A, A, B, C, D. And what about E? E is coming. <laughs> I'm pregnant. I told You're in you. gestation of E? <laughs> I'm in gestation of E. It's Listen, not done yet. yet. I don't like to talk. I'm a superstitious person. I know you are. You have your earrings, which are elephants. elephants. You have the elephant out there, directional oh. to the gate, the, the behind, and the the the, uh, the trunk up. The trunk so up. you are superstitious. Yeah, I, I am. I am like every Italian. That sometimes Italians say, no, no, we are not superstitious, but uh, they don't like black cats and they don't pass under the bridge a leather leather yeah. that's that's very bad luck <laughs> to pass they never break a mirror and i don't like number 13 but yeah, that's me that's me <laughs> number 13. so elizabeth i was listening listening to the very first podcast this morning before i came here and you were telling monty that you wanted to buy this castle close by yeah but no, it's not like, they don't sell it <laughs> so so that that's like five years ago yeah i know we wanted to buy it it's the castle close by here yeah just right yeah ah, okay because in this way the road was all mine and uh, was the castle and then Altesino and, and then, then Caparzo was me and uh, I was able to make uh, my kingdom but, <laughs> but it's okay I, I, it's enough Caparzo and Altesino it's okay but I have a nice project for the future I will let you know as soon okay. as done okay for very sure. good listen so on a closing note um, what would your, what would you like your legacy to be? Do you know? Like, you know, you have now, I mean, you had grandchildren earlier, your daughter is now full-time on board for the winery. Yes. But what would you like, you know, when you die, okay? When you die, what would you like your legacy to be? 
Uh, okay, they, uh, they're starting to learn how beautiful it is. I can understand they're young and they want to live in the city. The city is more exciting than being in the country. But I think sooner or later they will understand the important that uh, the country and this job and the enrichment that was given to me um, will give to them. Having four wineries and being alone, managing everything and, uh, and plus I had a family to, to take care, um, was not easy. But uh, what the wine gave to me and the wine world, everything is around the wine, like you, Bruce, all the people. And uh, because I'm learning every day from all the people around the wine. And it's such a challenge. This life in here is still, like I used to say, clean life. It's a clean world made of um, big values, um, it's not only money, the big matter, but it's to make uh, the perfect wine, to be the one who is able to do the best out of what God gave to us, the dirt, the, 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 the ground, the, the climate, uh, uh, the, and this special clone, Sangiovese, that God bless him, is the number one in the world. It's so faithful. Nobody is able to do such a big wine like we do in here. And that's unbelievable. They try in California, they try in France, they try everywhere. And uh, because I was able to change many jobs and to grow in my life, and, uh, and now I'm able to make my children mm, involved in, the, in this, and I hope my grandchildren and I hope my legacy in understanding and appreciate such a magical world, such a clean, clean way to think, a way to organize your days that will go to them and, and will touch them. And when I was working in the movie business, after a while I was losing my enthusiasm. When I was working in pharmaceutical, is industrial, uh, is a world made of sharks, uh, money, money, money is underneath everything. Of course you need the money, in other ways you don't survive, you go bankruptcy, you close everything, but, uh, but it's not the main aim. It's it not can't to, be the main focus. Not the focus. It's, uh, the dream in my soul, in my heart, is to make it the perfect. What I consider, of course, what for me is the perfect wine. On that note, um, thank you for hosting us. Oh, thank, thank you, you for coming. Elisabetta. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Let's cheer. You are already a legend. Uh, um, no, I'm not a legend. So, <clears throat> an incredible woman in wine. Very generous. And, you know, I love Elisabetta because she's always in Italian you say solare, sunny. She always has a sunny disposition. And I oh, think it, that is a very good positive note and energy to inject in everything that we do. So she's working on plan E. So we will have to come back and find out what that <laughs> is. So that's a wrap from Altesino Brunello di Montalcino here with Elisabetta Nudi Angelini. Thank you. Chin chin. Thank you, Stevie. It was really beautiful to spend the day with you and to take you around. That was really my pleasure. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, ragazzi. Ciao a tutti. <laughs> and that's a wrap. For more fascinating interviews from the world of wine, go to italianwinepodcast.com or find us on SoundCloud, Jimalaya, Spotify, or wherever you get your pods. Don't forget to subscribe and like all our channels. Chin chin, and thanks for listening.